thousands of people living on Sacramento streets. I'm glad that you got into Salvation Army. Because I'm, because I'm died out there. Men and women struggling. We have a safe place to, to die and, you know, a happy place. Seniors and the physically fragile. Well, when you get sick and you live alone, you have to do the best you can. But there is compassion. There you are, my dear. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Shaping new solutions. I think these kinds of things show the heart and soul of who we are as a country and as a society, and we need to take better care of people. Tonight, a KCRA 3 special presentation, Hope, Humanity, and Housing. Good evening, I'm Vicki Gonzalez. There are many paths on the road to homelessness, and the way out is difficult. Tonight, we're going to share the stories of those struggling, but also the people offering hope, humanity, and housing. We're going to start tonight with Joshua's House, the first homeless hospice in the West Coast. Room 104 is Jamie Murphy's home. They only allow you uh, usually 14 days to stay. In four days, the 46-year-old will need to find another motel to rest his failing body. But they've been allowing me 28 days, and my 28 days is coming up. A small saving grace at a time when blessings are hard to come by. And days are numbered. And this is for my bones. Pancreatic cancer, robbing Jamie of his health. I weighed 36 when I, um, 11 months ago. I'm just I'm dwindling, dwindling away. You know. How much do you weigh now? Probably uh, at least 131 right now. Consumed with solitary thoughts, reflecting on the fragility of love. She saw me starting to deteriorate and stuff. She couldn't, she was having a hard time um, handling it. So we parted ways and stuff. I couldn't. I don't want to do that to her, you know, anymore. Um. A terminal diagnosis ending an 11 year relationship with his fiance. It was her place, so um, I had to leave. Now searching for a purpose in life. A lot of times I, I don't, you know, sometimes I wonder why I'm here, you know. Jamie is now surviving alone with just over $900 a month to his name. As far as food goes, I really am, um, I can't eat very much. His appetite debilitated by cancerous pain, with precious time running out. They told me that it got, it got my liver, and I, I have liver failure, and um, I have like less than six months. So. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. Jamie accepts the hard truth. His death is quickly approaching. But the 46-year-old is also struggling with a chronic problem. And it's not that I'm spoiled. I just need a, a soup. I got to be in a clean environment, and um, I need to be, you know, kind of close to the hospitals. Desperate for affordable, sanitary living conditions, Jamie is learning permanent housing is a luxury out of reach. I am racing against uh, time a little bit, and I do need a place, um, a safe place. To, to, to go to, to f finally reside. For the terminally ill, like Jamie, experiencing homelessness, shelters are ill-equipped, motel bills add up, and residential hospice care non-existent. We can start the building construction. But a solution is beginning to take a compassionate shape. I felt like this was the perfect location, the perfect building. In Sacramento's River District, built nearly a century ago, what began as an armory is transforming. We're going to keep the, the beams, which are almost 100 years old. Now fulfilling Marlene von Friedrich Fitzwater's calling. Well, we want to try to have as open a feeling as we can, very much trying to create a, a very calm and kind of peaceful environment. Good day. Good day. Good day. The former UC Davis School of Medicine professor using her experience in the hospital to redefine the meaning of retirement. I met newly diagnosed cancer patients who were homeless 
And that was shocking to me. I had not thought about that, that someone could be going through cancer and be homeless. And as a cancer survivor myself, I just, I couldn't understand how you'd go through that. But a personal tragic layer to homelessness would ultimately propel Marlene into action. I um, lost my grandson in 2014 who died on the streets, had been homeless much of his adult life due to addictions. But he was this very loving, compassionate, wonderful young man. Joshua's death fueling Marlene's inspiration, breaking ground on a rare homeless hospice center. This will be the first one on the West Coast. And uh, right now I think it'll be the seventh one in the country. Named Joshua's House, honoring her late grandson. Homeless people should have the opportunity to have hospice care and be cared for and have a, a way to die with dignity and love um, as we do. Partnering with Sacramento Hospitals, the 20 bed facility offers a safe alternative to the more than 100 currently dying on the streets. I have a little sign on my desk that says start by starting. So it was like, okay, we can't solve the whole problem. We can't take care of everyone who's terminally ill and homeless, but we can start with 20 beds. Joshua's house still months away from opening. And I'm getting more and more of those calls and emails about, you know, can I check in? I, and it's really hard to say it's not open yet. One of those calls was actually Jamie. Searching for assistance during his critical limbo between motels. Marlene did more than answer, stepping in to help. For now, her nonprofit covering Jamie's motel costs. Oh, I got six minutes to start putting all this out. And extending invaluable companionship. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, so I'll see you over there. With weakening strength, Jamie prepares for yet another temporary stay. Bye, guys. But continuing a rotation of motels brings unexpected friendships. I'm actually blessed. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm just coming back to visit for a little bit. Great. I'm glad to see you. Proving that within dire circumstances are loving bonds. You're all settled in. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I love you. I love you too. I don't deserve this, but thank you guys oh, stop so much. It. Yes, you do. With gratitude and numbered months. We all have done things in the past, you know, that we we are ashamed of and stuff. But I just I'll just do the best I can. Jamie finally found his purpose. It's changed everything. My whole outlook on everything. Everything. Knowing his life will fall short of the completion of Joshua's house. When I'm in heaven, I'll, pu I'll put good words in for everybody and stuff. Jamie is leaving behind a legacy, outliving his terminal diagnosis. Get him off the streets. Give him the same chance I'm getting. That's what I want for people. That the most vulnerable die with dignity and respect. After his death, we were able to connect with his family. To learn more about their relationship, head over to our KCRA3 mobile app. Would you like a, a blue hat and gloves? Now taking you to Sacramento streets with two feet and a simple approach to humanity. Sister Libby and Mercy Peddlers meeting small needs with the goal of finding big solutions for those on the streets. The Gospel of Matthew. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. A verse guiding Sister Libby's purpose. That starts. Cream and sugar? With a cup of simple generosity. We do a little stirring. Planting seeds of trust. There you are, sir. Do you want a nutritional bar too? With the often ignored. And the soft ones are the best because many homeless people have very few teeth. For a quarter century, Sister Libby's calling gravitates to those with very little. The next um, pilgrimage is Monday, okay? Spread the word. A devotion, starting with becoming a Sister of Mercy. To really bring uh, love and care and welcoming the stranger. 
now culminating to a mercy peddler. So it's really about a one-on-one -on -one relationship and building trust and care and saying, hey, how else can I help you today? I'm here for you. Sister Libby pioneering her own path of serving others. I serve about 100 a day, and I start, you know, from Midtown, go all the way down K Street. Peddling a trike full of basic necessities, all donations from the community. Deodorant, lotion, toothbrushes, toothpaste, handy wipes, you know, even combs. We have combs, bar soaps, and then, of course, the resources, you know, where can they go tonight? Small gestures, opening a door of connecting. Part of the communication is to offer what people would like, you know, to start the dialogue. Would you like coffee? Would you like cream and sugar in it? And when I'm stirring it, then I have a conversation. In the nonprofit's first year, what began as a ministry of one. Thank you. All right, Anthony, you take care of yourself. Is blossoming into an army of compassion. It started as, you know, just myself and a few followers and now we have 50 Mercy Peddlers. College students, those working nine to five and retirees. A diverse spectrum of Sacramentans. <laughs> so this is how it works. Each volunteer finds their own neighborhood. Yeah, you're on time. Donating their time. <laughs> and whatever necessities they can provide. Creamer? Just please. Everything's donated from the coffee to the hygiene items to the nutritional bars. And so we try to keep our operations very minimal and it's all volunteers and all donations. It comes from their heart, you know. It doesn't come from something they have to do. They come out with their little baskets and they hand it out. It makes my day. Volunteers ranging from the age of 20 to 82 years young. Thank you very much. And oh, yes. Good luck and you like, you're a good person. And I think they know that I enjoy it just as much as they do. Uh, it's the truth. Well, you know you <laughs> have my thing. respect. And I think it keeps me alive. You know, without purpose. Why do you get up in the morning? Each moment of generosity. Is there anything else? Sucks. Building genuine relationships and a deeper understanding of humanity. I feel like these people out here are just like any one of us, and it could happen to anybody at any time. Pedaling towards a growing need. One day they may be asking for some soap and shampoo. The next day they may say, how do I actually get into a shelter? And it's steps, but you got to start somewhere. With solutions and mercy. I was working for the last four years. I got laid off in, la in October of last year. I worked for Verizon eight years. Um, I've been in customer service since 1992. I actually lived off my 401k. It, don't worry, I, I didn't go down without a fight. Oh, that's great. Yeah, look at that. Hats and gloves. A lot of donations this morning. In the past year, pedaling, mm -hmm. what has been the biggest shift for you? I am astounded that I see a new person almost every day. You find one here, one there, a couple here, very lonely, and that's heartbreaking. I feel invisible. This is my friend Alicia. Can I give you a big hug today? Oh, good to see you. Aww. Good to see you too. How are you doing today? Oh, okay. As soon as you get located in your place, I'll come and see you, okay? How do you find that thread and that anchor of hope and optimism yeah. with a very compounded, complicated problem? So it takes time and steps in order to build a sense of value. Yeah, you're so special. I'm worthy enough to do something about my life. And they love that idea. I want to become a peddler because they want to give back. So I'm always recruiting um, previously homeless people to become mercy peddlers. <laughs> We're now going to introduce you to a pioneering program through the reality of a growing number of seniors struggling to find affordable housing. I'm just gonna guess that it's, it's pretty much done. Irene Satello is savoring a fresh start. 
and I haven't had one in a long time. I've seen them for as high as five dollars each. Looking forward to the future, while accepting some realities reluctantly. I'll be 70 years old. I can wait forever for that. <laughs> but with age comes nostalgia. Irene fondly remembering feelings of comfort and security. I had a nice apartment, one bedroom in Carmichael. I've always lived in Carmichael. Had my two little dogs. I had calm cows. But the past handful of years for the 69-year-old have been bumpy at best. It was five years ago when the doctor botched the surgery. A saga of complications from a failed intestinal surgery, ultimately ending a chapter of financial stability. And then I was addicted to my uh, apartment because the in-home supportive care workers stole my money. And, um, and I, I couldn't make it up fast enough and uh, I was evicted. Irene, finding herself with few affordable options. I was going to sleep on, in my car. I had no place to go. Alone, the 69-year-old found herself in an unthinkable situation, living at a homeless shelter for the first time in her life. It was like going to a different planet. It was really, really, really hard. Irene's confluence of circumstances, traumatic. I would walk down the street and just wishing I was dead but also a symptom of a bigger crisis. If you get to be my age, nobody wants to give you a job. Seniors who are just one financial catastrophe away from the streets. We're too old to be, you know, in that situation. We're not young anymore. But Irene is now part of a vulnerable population, benefiting from a new solution. You can just turn it down a little bit. This spring, Sacramento Self-Help Housing launching a county program instead of shelters focusing on homes. These folks are not paying any rent. They don't pay any fees. So that any income they have, they're able to save during the time that they're with us. Irene is just one of nearly 50 residents of all ages, currently sharing county-managed rental homes, each with their own story. A 10-minute drive away in another home. We meet 55-year-old Hannah Smith. She lost her career and savings to addiction. And then he introduced me to Crystal. I, stopped, I all of a sudden lost the desire to go to work. Her boyfriend, 42-year-old Benjamin Dodge, laid off from a job that never paid the rent. Even while I was working, I was homeless. And 59-year-old Pamela Poole, who found herself sleeping on the side of a church after becoming a widow. I had a little talking time. My, my, my husband died in 2011. My, and then, I, then I lost track of time. Targeting those facing the highest barriers to housing, which means regardless of evictions. Once you're evicted, you just can't get a place. They just won't rent to you. Accepting those struggling with substance abuse. I just love this house. Uh, this house has good energy in it. And even taking in couples and pets. She's a good girl. Several residents share a house and bedrooms with supervision. Then we've got a house leader in here, so each one of our houses has one of our staff living here um, full time. While a caseworker visits one on one with each roommate to get their life back on track. She went with me to my doctor visit. She takes us um, to the pharmacy. She's really, really good. All free of charge, as long as they make healthy strides. I don't want to just settle for a social security or disability. I want to get a job. I don't want to be homeless the rest of my life. You know, I got grandkids. I don't want them to be able to come visit me. So far, Sacramento County is funding 15 rental properties. They're so respectful. Like, these houses are cleaner than my house. I say, honey, I'm the housekeeper. That's the reason why this house looks so fabulous. As for Irene. I've got my sewing machine down there that I just bought. She is investing in the skill of her hands. This is his shirt. This is the pattern. Starting a small business as a seamstress. I think these are going to be pretty good. They should sell. With the goal of regaining financial independence. I want to stay here as long as I can to make enough money. And in turn, grabbing hold of newfound optimism and stability. Any kind of job. Uh, I'm in the sales 
people personally. So anything like that, I would love to sit back and do. Did you do that before? Yes. I've had lots of experience uh, in sales. What is stability to you? Stability? Yeah. Meeting all your bills every month <laughs> without feeling a You go into your last dollar. Welcome back to a KCRA 3 special presentation, Hope, Humanity, and Housing. We end tonight with a big win for the Volunteers of America Triage Shelter. Recently, the city was able to extend the lease, keeping doors open for at least six months. That means continuing services for hundreds of people. Would you like some cherries too, babe? Today is Cherie Bloom's birthday. I love these cherries. You want some cherries? Welcoming 48 years with new support and the gift of a fresh perspective. First of all, I don't got nothing to do. Yeah. I can't dress up and go out now. Patiently chipping away at hopelessness. We've been homeless for three years. We had an apartment. I, um, I really love that place. We had our dogs. But following her mother's death and a traumatic relationship with her ex, Cherie lost stability. I'm beginning not to trust people anymore because they're hurting me. For the past three years, living in an encampment along the American River became routine. Until one day when everything almost came to an end. All I see was bam. Cherie, the victim of a hit and run, an odd blessing in disguise. How badly injured were you? What, what was that from? The tailpipe. But the thing I felt was the burn, you know, the tailpipe on my chest. I was like, oh my God, this is so important. Cherie's recovery connecting her to a new type of assistance, joining hundreds moving through Sacramento's innovative triage shelter. Some of our most chronically um, homeless, um, mentally ill, um, physically disabled, um, addicted individuals. I see a lot of our friends that are, are 65 to, I think our oldest is 88 years old, and almost everyone in the building has a disability. The city pioneering a new path to stability for those facing the toughest obstacles. For the first time, we're allowing pets and we're allowing camping equipment and all the things that have prevented people from wanting to come into shelter where you actually say to people, well, you know, you can't use drugs on site, of course, or drink on site. We're going to take you as you are. In addition to beds and meals are a rotation of on-site social, mental, and medical services. Now I've got the security card, which I haven't had in over 15 years. Yeah, I go to a doctor. Yeah. And I'm signed up for housing. How long have you been outside? Since 98, 20 years. I've been very happy. I own a lot. As for Cherie, being hit by a car changed her outlook on life for the better. Oh, Welcoming the triage shelter's opportunity and one-on-one -on -one help. Because I've learned the word thank you goes a long way. And if you sincerely mean it. Surrounded by newfound optimism. I have the money, but need to go ahead and pay the deposit in a couple months' rent. So, take the leap and do it. Counting down the days to moving into her own home. You guys got me back to where I was. Mm -hmm. And deeply grateful for the hard-earned journey. It took a lot for me to get up and say, okay, I'm going to do this. But if I wouldn't have, where would I be? Since opening about a year ago, the city says the triage shelter has served more than 600 people. Of those, 27% are now in permanent housing. The city is now working on developing smaller triage shelters in each Sacramento district. We want to thank you for watching KCRA3's Hope, Humanity and Housing. This special is the result of a 2018 California Fellowship with USC Annenberg's Center for Health Journalism. Have a great evening.